and to talk to you about our sidewalk mapping project in Portland. So a quick overview of my slides. First, I'll provide some background on TriMet and our use of OpenStreetMap and uh, focus on the Open Trip Planner. Then I'll talk about this mobility on demand grant that we were recently awarded from the Federal Transit Administration. It's allowing us to invest further in Open Trip Planner and improve OpenStreetMap data in our area. Then I'll talk about the sidewalk tagging effort that we recently mostly completed uh, in our region and uh, methods we used and uh, a bit on why we chose to do centerline tagging of sidewalks rather than uh, separate way sidewalks. Finally, uh, some uh, comments about the pedestrian routing enhancements for Open Trip Planner and the next steps for the project. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with TriMet, we provide transit in the Portland, Oregon region. We have bus, light rail, and commuter rail service been there about 50 years. This GIF here shows uh, the newest bridge across the Willamette River, the Tillicum Crossing. It's the first of its kind. It has space for transit, pedestrians, and cyclists, but not private automobiles. And we've also been a leader in the open source tools and open data space since about 2000. Uh, we have a software policy that requires us to at least consider open source options when making software acquisitions. And uh, we helped create the data specification that's used by Google Maps and everything else to provide transit uh, information. Uh, and then we helped launch Open Trip Planner in 2009. More about that soon. And uh, in conjunction with that, we adopted OpenStreetMap as our base map for the trip planning and also for internal mapping applications at, uh, in 2011. And we've been helping to maintain and contribute to OpenStreetMap in our region since 2009. There was a big push from about 2009 to 12 uh, where the four lovely interns shown there uh, worked on improving alignments, adding ways and attributes, and verifying directionality in OSM. Uh, since then, we've been more focused on maintenance. And this, uh, this screen snip here shows uh, one of the, an example of one of the areas that was corrected. At that time, there were some um, Tiger imports that still were not very good, and so they went through with aerials and with the local street uh, authoritative shape files and improved the map there. And uh, that's largely to serve Open Trip Planner, which is our public-facing trip planner application. It's open source, uh, uses OSM data, and it's unique in being an open source trip planner that does true mixed mode routing. So a lot of trip planners will do um, bike or transit or car, but uh, our trip planner actually optimizes for combinations of those things. So um, this map shown here is uh, basically my commute to work. So I take the uh, 71 bus for like the first three miles and then I have an easy cruise downhill on my bike uh, so I don't get too disheveled on my way to the office. Uh, and Open Trip Planner has seen a lot of uh, adoption worldwide, uh, especially in Europe. There's a lot of applications. It's much bigger than just TriMet at this point. So, uh, and with the Mobility on Demand Sandbox Grant that was recently awarded to us by the Federal Transit Administration, we have an opportunity to further improve these tools. So they announced $8 million to support innovative, accessible combinations of mobility on demand options with transit last year. And what's meant by mobility on demand is basically the new class of transit options, including Lyft, Uber, car to go bike share, that allow users to quickly see what's near them, book a ride or a bicycle, and then be on their way quickly. It's, it's really disrupting the transit space, and the FTA thinks we need to uh, quickly be able to keep up and take advantage of these new options. And TriMet was one of the grantees. We were awarded 678000 to build off our existing trip planning tools and help solve the last mile problem. Uh, by incorporating these new modes. So basically, um, transit can take you a lot of places, but it can't necessarily take you door to door, but maybe if you take a lift uh, mile to the max line, and then it takes you across town. And our trip planner is going to be able to plan that kind of mixed mode trip. And we're really focused on replicability with our open source tools and open data. Uh, there's a public dashboard on the project, trimet.org slash mod. I encourage you all to check it out. So the project scope. Um, I'll just briefly describe. We've been working with Mapsen and Conveil um, primarily on this. Uh, Mapsen's making improvements to their Peleus Geocoder, which is already a very robust tool um, that will make it even more useful for transit organizations like TriMet and other government municipalities. Uh, so they added point-based interpolation uh, as their in-kind contribution. They created a great local installation package, and they're developing a friendlier import process for open addresses. 
and the open trip planner enhancements include, as I mentioned, incorporation of Uber, Lyft, and bike share into trip plans, um, and better real-time trip planning. So if your bus is running a little late, you can uh, quickly see a new route suggested to you. Uh, they're also creating a modular React Redux uh, front-end library for it, so we can have a nice, sleek-looking uh, mobile-first application for our users. And then finally, they're going to be making enhancements to pedestrian routing in OpenTrip Planner. Uh, I'll be focusing on that. And then those are taking advantage of the OpenStreetMap data enhancements that we've been doing. So we've added sidewalk tags in almost our entire region at this point. It was an import-free process, fully manual. We added a centerline tag to, uh, of sidewalk equals both left, right, or no to all streets in the region except service streets and uh, motorways. Before we undertook this, we did outreach at meetups and via the local OSM user group email, uh, just to make sure people were comfortable with it. But since it's manual and um, it's pretty standard uh, approach to tagging sidewalks, we got a lot of buy-in from OSM community. Everyone was happy with the, what we were doing. So we did the work in Jossum uh, using the si sidewalk map paint style, which uh, creates these sort of artificial uh, lines so you can easily see where which streets are tied. Uh, tagged with sidewalks. So the green have them on both sides, the red has on neither. Um, and for reference, we pulled in these uh, local shape files. Um, and we didn't actually import them, but they just were up in Jossum so we could see what the city thought. And they were generally correct, but there were places where they were out of date or incorrect. And then we used uh, imagery as well. And had to break up the street segments some. Uh, the map box knife tool was handy for that, so thanks for that. Uh, so a bit about why we did centerline tags and not separate ways. So this is really an area where there isn't a clear consensus in the OSM community right now. There's strong advocates for both approaches. There was a lot of debate about it, especially last summer when the University of Washington uh, Access Map team came forward with their proposed new sidewalk schema. And I think they're doing amazing work. And I'd like to see us get there eventually. But for the purposes of our project and our trip planner, we really had to go with the speed and consistency of tagging sidewalks on center lines. So um, this was also partially because even if we were able to enter all that data, there would be maintenance issues, and it would create issues for trip plan narratives, as sidewalks don't have names, and it would create a lot more segments. So this is an example uh, pedestrian detail narrative uh, just for a half mile walk from the Hollywood Transit Center in Portland to uh, the library there. And it's already 13 steps long, and it's got some, some uh, unnamed path segments. It could be very confusing for somebody who really needs those step-by-step -step directions. And uh, adding sidewalks as separate ways without names could really uh, complicate that further. Also, it would require a lot of overhaul to the Open Trip Planner, which is just something we don't have the resources for at this time. So uh, it's a pretty large undertaking to add sidewalk tags to this whole area. Um, there were four of us working on it, mostly the three people here that you see. They did the lion's share of the work. Uh, we used grids in Google Sheets as sort of a quick and dirty task management system. Uh, I made these uh, grids in, in GIS that had like uh, cell, cell IDs, and then we created a corresponding Google Sheet. People would just sort of like put their initials into the, uh, the cell that they were working on and then mark it done when we were done. And we also used Overpass Turbo uh, to uh, quickly find street segments that did not have sidewalk tags yet, sort of a cleanup process. Um, created a JOSM session with all the grids, reference sidewalks, and styling that they needed and shared that with them. And they were really hardworking and got extremely efficient at this process. And this GIF here shows the work that they did um, through the period of about March 2016 to uh, August 2016. So when we started, the streets shown in blue already had sidewalk presence absence information. Uh, and that had been added by TriMet interns previously, as well as the OSM community at large. And then City of Portland Bureau of Transportation um, did this orange area uh, as sort of a pilot project. And they sort of um, figured out the JOSM method, and, went, and then we took it on and added it to the rest of the Portland region. Uh, and since then, we've expanded to our seven county area of interest. Our trip planner doesn't currently support this whole region, but we're looking to do that so that people can, uh, can figure out how to get uh, from Salem to Portland on public transit. Uh, we've almost completely covered it. There are some streets that have uh, like too much tree canopy to see, so we just left those blank for now. 
Um, and one of the cooler aspects of the project is that it's getting a lot of buy-in and excitement from municipal GIS staff in our area. They, uh, it's currently the most up-to-date, seamless, uh, consistent sidewalk layer that's available, and it's routable as well, which is great. Uh, and you, you can quickly visualize patterns in sidewalk distribution in Portland. Uh, the dark lines here are the Willamette River. Uh, blue areas have sidewalks on both sides, red uh, neither orange one or the other. And uh, so this area in Southwest was all built like mid 20th century when people thought you should just drive everywhere forever. <laughs> um, and the sidewalks data have been converted to shapefile and are being distributed along with the authoritative uh, R list data set by Metro now. Uh, it's in beta mode, but it's still cool to see that interest in OSM from the sort of official GIS community. Uh, so before I talk about the improvements to the Open Trip Planner, I want to give you a, more of a sense of what it currently does uh, for pedestrians. So like other trip planning tools, it creates a, a graph where the segments are converted to edges in the graph. And as a part of that conversion process, the lengths are adjusted based on the suitability of the street type for particular uh, types of traffic. So for pedestrians, uh, footways are shortened, so they're more attractive. Um, it is able to use pedestrian plazas. It just draws uh, segments from all of the entry points to all the other entry points. Uh, it prohibits pedestrians from using certain roads, like uh, motorways. And we also use the foot equals discourage tag to sort of control um, to remove problematic paths from our graph that shouldn't be removed from OpenStreetMap. But like we get customer emails saying, I was directed to go up this crazy muddy slope with blackberries. And um, so what we can do is apply that tag and then it won't show up in the graph for routing. Uh, it does actually support some accessibility now. Um, so if you select a wheelchair only, and I don't think this is exposed in our, in our public UI, then it will rule out steps and it, uh, also segments that have the wheelchair equals no tag. Uh, and this is what the configuration Java file looks like for Open Trip Planner. So you can see uh, for highway equals cycleway, the, uh, the mul they're multiplied by 0.6, so they appear shorter and um, you get more bikes on there. So. So some of the enhancements that we're discussing are to uh, use the sidewalk tags that we've created to, to weight streets, to uh, direct people to streets with sidewalk coverage more heavily. So it doesn't currently consider sidewalk tags at all. So that's going to be added in the next few months. We're also thinking to use a combination of sidewalk tags and a max speed tag to uh, strongly discourage routing along high-speed roads that don't have sidewalks. I've gotten a couple of complaints about people being routed along them and feeling very unsafe, and we really want to avoid that in the future. Also looking to uh, include elevation for the pedestrian portion. The cycling directions currently consider elevation, so people can choose a flatter path if they prefer. Um, but we're, we may be adding that for pedestrians as well, so they can, there's not a lot of hills in, in Portland, but there's a few, and also we want it to be extensible across the world. Some cities have more hills. Uh, looking at doing an intersection penalty, not sure if this is going to be something we do soon or later, but um, like when you're crossing a major street, it can take quite a few minutes actually for the traffic signals to turn and for you to find the right place to cross. And so the time um, estimate for the pedestrian portion can be inaccurate when crossing streets like that. So uh, also looking at doing side specific routing. This may not be possible um, in the near future. Like the developers are just started on this milestone. They're, they're still like brainstorming and figuring out what's feasible. We're also talking about our possible new user interface widgets. Uh, this will be configurable between transit agencies, and each one will have to make their own decisions about balancing complexity uh, and configure, uh, you know, a customize ability uh, with ease of use. So it's kind of a delicate thing to figure out how much to expose, how many parameters to expose to the user. Uh, here's a quick toy version of what we think the sidewalk waiting should do. So this is a little screen snip from Jossum showing an a area in my neighborhood that has uh, inconsistent sidewalk coverage. These areas in red here uh, do not have sidewalks. The green areas do. Um, and apologies to anyone with red-green color blindness. This is just how it's done here. Um, so uh, 
we're going from the orange dot to the green dot at the bottom, there's three possible paths we could take, but only the third one, or the third one has the best sidewalk coverage, so we want to um, make it appear shorter in the graph so that people are routed along it. So uh, next steps, we're moving into the maintenance phase on the sidewalk information. We're gonna focus on newly constructed areas, do a quarterly update there. Um, QA, QC with new aerials as those are released. Uh, we may be getting a leaf off aerial flight, which would be great for sidewalk tagging. OTP development is active right now, as I mentioned. We're looking to do a beta release early next year. And we are going to continue exploring and thinking about how we can get to that curb level detail in Open Trip Planner that's really necessary for a fully accessible routing. Uh, but for now, we feel like what we're doing is making great strides and is uh, something we can do, uh, achieve now. So uh, here's my contact info. Thank you all so much for your attention. <laughs> Any questions? We have a traveling mic here. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, just two quick ones. Um, do you consider um, crosswalks, especially in between intersections? And are there any tags for like whether there are street lights? Um, we don't do that yet, but that is something that we are considering with the sort of intersection penalty. Maybe just doing it across busier streets. Um, and there are, there are tags for street lights and like levels of crosswalk safety that we could possibly utilize. But um, yeah, to be determined. Hi, I do a lot of work with local communities and uh, bike infrastructure. And the municipal governments tend to be really hesitant to use OpenStreetMap as a, as a base source mm -hmm. for their data. Did you run into any of those problems at TriMet or were they pretty much on board from the start? Um, so I've been at TriMet for about two years, so it was adopted long before I got there. Uh, and I think that there were some some hesitation. They have a process where we uh, import it every two weeks and run it through a series of tests to make sure um, quite a, like several hundred trips aren't broken. And if those are broken, then we'll look at the, we'll delay and look at the street map. So we have sort of a process that makes people feel more comfortable with it. Um, yeah, we, there's like a whole PowerPoint on why we selected OpenStreetMap. Um, my boss, Bibiana McHugh, is amazing and has been a real pioneer in uh, using OSM in government. And uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Can we give a, another round of applause to Madeline? Thank you. Thanks.